In our previous film, we showcased the increasing health, environmental and ethical awareness around the globe as more and more people began to speak out. Why do we rarely hear climate change campaigns targeting the animal agriculture industry? Let's follow the money. And who funded that study? But who funded that study? funded that study? That was an egg that industry, was, funded that industry funded study. The disproportion between that little bit of extra pleasure you might get from eating meat and the phenomenal amount of destruction required to produce it should surely commend it to anyone as a stupid thing to do. What do you think is the biggest misconception about a vegan diet? The biggest misconception is everyone says, where do you get your protein? And I've had a long-term health condition and I've seen a dramatic shift in my health in the last 12 days. It's recognized again by the American insurance industry that there's only two dietary plans that can reverse heart disease. There's no meat in those programs. Mm -hmm. They're plant-based programs. It's blatantly obvious now that we do not need to consume animals to be healthy. We'll be far healthy without them. As veganism continued to grow in popularity and garner mainstream appeal, the meat industry found themselves under increasing pressure. You say yourself you have a vested interest, Cormac, in this. Are you worried about veganism growing in popularity? Because the meat and dairy industry, let's be honest and not pull any punches, it's a sunset industry. It has no place in civilized society, period. This film shares 2018's story behind the changing conversation. For me, I want to bring a message, which is veganism and that there doesn't have to be torture in fabulous fashion. 2018, this next year, is our year. Like it's the year we go mainstream. So what we're definitely seeing for 2018, the theme overall is plant-based eating. Have faith that there are doctors, that there are lawyers, that there are people out there who are also embracing this. As people use digital technology more than ever, the lies created by powerful industries were revealed and the shape-shifting began. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? Steroid injected minced cow bollock, courtesy of the farming industry, tearing up rainforests to plant animal feed. I have slowly and reluctantly come to the conclusion that as it stands now, honest doctors can no longer practice honest medicine. We have a complete healthcare system failure. We are contemplating an agricultural crisis, an ecological crisis, as well as the climate breakdown crisis. And it's being driven by the food that we eat and the way that it's produced. There's a 500% increase in vegans in the United right. States since 2014. That's like a growing, growing number. The demand for meat-free food increased by nearly 8,000% last year. And the number of people who are going vegan has quadrupled in the last five years. Now, more and more people are cutting out meat and dairy products and adopting a plant-based diet. And yes. if we can live well without causing harm to other animals, why wouldn't we? So I, I, would, I agree. You know what? I agree with you. I'm just going to say it. I agree with you completely there. You know, the evidence is clear. Uh, the, the future is definitely plant-based. It's not just a trend. It's not just a phase. People have been hit with multiple sources of information and it has, still hasn't hit everybody but more and more people are seeing some pretty dramatic and compelling research. There's more and more vegans all the time, there's more and more people taking that emphasis to change their life and be active and to spread the message. In 2018, I have seen an explosive growth in the vegan movement. We're going to be looking at a very, very different world in about five years where uh, a huge percentage of people will be vegan. I think we're very close to that tipping point. What was once a fringe movement is now mainstream. There's no stereotype anymore. I mean, we really are heading into a plant-based revolution. The world is changing. The new year ushered in Veganuary, an initiative that has seen explosive growth over the last few years 
and encourages the public to try a plant-based diet. In case you hadn't noticed, this month is being called Veganuary. It's Vegan January. It's people cutting back on meat and dairy foods for their New Year's resolution. And many retailers and restaurants have picked up on the trend. In January 2018, it broke new records, grabbed headlines and set off a series of TV debates. If people want to do this, get on with it quietly, do whatever you want to do. And arguments against veganism flooded the mainstream. Go back to the time of the caveman, for God's sake, it's nature. Do you understand that what happens in jungles? <clears throat> uh, we've developed, we've, met, we've, we've grown canine teeth. Where? Canine Show me teeth. yours. Put me right off him, I found it. <laughs> he was a wimp. Because mm. oh, he couldn't order a good, like a red-blooded man who can order a good steak. So if you think about PETA and environmentalist groups, veganism, they're all able to exist now in 2018 because of the meat eaters of the past who built this amazing civilization that allows unfocused adults to chase their fringe causes. Well, what do you mean it's not obviously, a thing? People eat meat just stupid, not eat meat. That's just stupid. It's not a real thing. Why is it stupid? Because everybody likes meat. How would you know unless you ate it? Hey, who can't eat a good piece of bacon? And you say that people who are on vegan diets are malnourished, and people who are malnourished are more likely to commit crimes. Presumably, you're not going out and collecting your own nuts and seeds and plants, are you? No, and so and I think... Who's killing those plants? I, I think... You? Seriously? I, part, okay. Who's killing all those plants? Well, who's collecting them? Because you make the point Someone's about no Someone's ripping them out of the ground. The anti-vegan backlash continued when iconic cooking show Great British Bake Off announced it was going vegan for a week with some unable to hide their fury on social media, boycotting the show on principle. Vegans were branded demons at meat industry conferences, senior editors made jokes about killing vegans, and the rhetoric on mainstream media became weaker and even irrelevant. Now, if you look at avocados, for example, which many vegans consume, and we're now consuming six times um, the, the, the number of avocados here in the West uh, than five years ago even, you know, the, the Mexican rainforest is being completely destroyed. But is it possible that the vegans and the vegetarians have gotten hold of the agriculture department and infiltrated it, so to speak, and are pushing a meatless menu on the rest of the world? Americans eat two times as much meat as anybody else in the world. Well, that's because we win all the world wars, Juan. we got to go. We're undefeated. You don't think a cow's a steak, do you? <laughs> oh, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Arguments against veganism were tested on mainstream platforms, and the debate was raging. If you saw an animal die, right, mm. if you saw the animal die, if I slaughtered a, if I slaughtered the beef in front of you, could you then eat a steak? Because that's the hypocrisy I can't would, would anybody here go plant-based? No, but those are practical questions. I want to get to the root question, the moral question. Do we, do we have dominion over the animals or are they our peers? Angie says there is real evidence of a plant-based diet being not only healthier for the individual, but the planet. Now veganism was gaining mainstream appeal its detractors were finding it hard to provide credible arguments and their weaknesses were being exposed. I mean, do you show the people that come to your farm things like the, the artificial insemination? Do you show them what happens to the calves? Do you show them the pens they're kept in for up to eight weeks at a time where they're not allowed to see their mums, they're allowed to nurture, they're allowed to socialise? Do you take them to the slaughterhouse as well and show the knife being pulled across their throat? Or do you keep that bit hidden and just show kind of the cows grazing and being fed? I like to think that we show uh, everyone the full spectrum of well, do, do you? Or you either do or you don't. Well, I like to think that we do, yes. So do you show the people that come to your farm what happens to the dairy calves that are taken from their mother? Yes. And do you show the fact that they suck on people's fingers because they want to suckle from their mother to obtain the milk that we take that is right for them? When you take a calf away from its mum, what is that process like? <sighs> Cut. <laughs> In response to Veganuary and the TV appearances it brought came an increasing backlash from the dairy industry, which launched Febudairy. Led by livestock specialist Dr Judith Kappa, farmers were instructed to spread a positive message of the dairy industry throughout February. I thought it was rather a shame not to celebrate all of the fabulous dairy products that we all have access to every single day. So for example, we have butter and bread here. And lastly, of course, nice cold, ice cold milk, as the old slogan used to go. Febudairy did little to convince the public to rally behind the dairy industry. Instead, it had an unexpected effect. 
Many used Febby Dairy to create awareness about the dairy industry and initiatives were launched, including the Switch for Good campaign at the end of February, which aired an anti-dairy advert during the Winter Olympic Games' closing ceremony. I did it and I got stronger. I did it to take back my life. I did it to run faster and I ran faster the next day. I did it for my athletic performance and it worked. I made the switch at almost 40 for my health. I didn't need dairy milk to make Olympic history twice. Going back to cow's milk? No way. I made the switch for good. For good. For good. I am proud to be dairy free. As the message around dairy spread, things were also starting to change behind the scenes. Powerful investors were joining forces with food tech leaders. And this, by the end of 2018, would put significant pressure on the animal agriculture industry. We could produce all the protein required by the world's population 2050 with 2% of Earth's land if we did it the way we're producing our meat, as opposed to more than 45% of Earth's land that's currently being used raising animals for food. As we get closer and closer to building a piece of meat that has no differences from its animal protein equivalent, we welcome in literally you know, hundreds of thousands of new consumers with every incremental change and step we make forward to making this product as good as it can be. The meat analog industry, which laid down its roots in Europe in the 1970s with products like textured vegetable protein, was traditionally seen as tasteless and unfashionable. But in 2018, it had morphed into a more lucrative and exciting market. We are celebrating the release of Masters of the Sun VR and Apple the App, the Filipino chef, is cooking <laughs> Beyond Burgers. One company, Beyond Meat, insisted that their plant-based burger be positioned in the meat aisle. It was a gamble, but knowing the product's taste and texture had begun to mimic traditional meat, bosses didn't want it hidden away in the free-from section. Within months of merchandising the burger, it was outselling beef in some stores. In Southern California, in one of the largest conventional retailers in the country, we are now the number one selling patty in the meat case. So ahead of Angus, ahead of 80-20 beef, ahead of turkey, ahead of chicken patties. And our belief is that we will transform the meat section into the protein section. So it's no longer just hamburger, chicken, you know, chicken breast. It's cow protein, chicken protein, and plant protein. And the results have been phenomenal. We have launched this now in the two largest retailers in the United States. In several regions, the Beyond Burger is the top selling packaged burger in the meat section. To have that level of interest in the products in the meat case itself, this soon was really exciting. Other supermarkets began to position plant-based products in the meat aisle. The meat analog industry quickly attracted high profile investors, such as one of Asia's richest men, Li Ka-shing, Bill Gates, and Leonardo DiCaprio, among others, as influencers around the world became increasingly aware of the impact of animal agriculture. The scale of the impact, the environmental impact of animal agriculture is really hard to appreciate. It blows almost everything else out of the water. It's responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than all planes, cars, trains, and other transportation combined. That is really shocking when you read that. Above the fossil fuel industry. It takes at least 10 times as much energy and resources to make a pound of animal protein as it does for plant-based protein. We cannot continue to sustain our population on the level of meat consumption that we are mm -hmm. without having something change. And what we've heard now is that we need to keep it below one and a half degrees um, uh, temperature rise. And in order to do that, we must absolutely cut down on meat and dairy consumption. And so it's the quickest way that we have for grabbing the thermostat of the planet and turning it down. Even if we don't care about ourselves, we have our children. 80% of all U.S. antibiotics are fed to farmed animals, leading to dangerous and curable human diseases. The world has plenty of scope to feed 9 billion, 10 billion, 12 billion people, but not if we're all eating steak and chicken and pork. We, we have to go to that plant-based diet. If, if, you know, if there's to be any fair settlement, fair dispensation for the rest of this century so that we don't have a situation where the rich can just pursue whatever desires they want while the poor die as a result. The most striking statistic for me is that 100% of famine is a result of animal agriculture. And I sometimes have people challenge that fact and I'm like, 
it takes 280 pounds of grain to make one pound of beef. If you fed that grain directly to people, famine ends. Building meat from plants quickly became a huge scientific research effort. New facilities were set up and the stage was set for huge change. We live in an age of disruption. We have Uber and Lyft disrupting the taxi cab and limo industry. We have Airbnb disrupting the hotel industry. And we need to disrupt the entrenched fast food industry, those dinosaurs. We are almost 50% preferred by meat consumers over the meat they get today. And so in two or three years, we've essentially caught up to the cow. But we're only getting better, and we already know a bunch of ways that we can make our product better from the fat system, the way the flavors generate, the texture and the chew. And as we continue to research and build that with our team, we'll start delivering this. And you know, next year and the year after, it'll be better and better to the point where the cow really is completely obsolete as a technology for food. Oh, you're going to love this. Mm. You can have a great tasting, juicy burger without the meat. Like my husband has an impossible burger and he is like, this tastes like a regular burger to me. I don't know everything else on this thing, but the, the burger itself. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I like it. This thing tastes like meat, it smells like meat. If you put it in the pan or put it in the grill, it acts like meat. And I'm telling you in the next, let's say five to seven years, the impact on the meat industry is going to be strong. None of what you see here comes from an animal, not even the egg. What we tend to do no matter what is focus on the things that matter. Are we reaching more people? Are we doing it in a way that's actually helping the planet instead of harming the planet? And if the answer is yes to those things, we feel good. And if the answer is not, we feel like assholes. Um, and our biggest question is, is this thing, is this person we're hiring, is this thing we're doing increasing the probability that we do more good? And if the answer is yes, we're going after it. To test this out, we got 10 regular cheeseburgers and then 10 impossible vegetarian burgers to do a little compare and contrast. As businesses capitalized on the selling power of plant-based alternatives, many physicians within healthcare dug deeper. Tastes great and you get to live longer. That's what plant-based right. eating is all about. Using the remarkable power of whole food plant-based nutrition to prevent and treat disease. Say goodbye to the days of just hot dogs and hamburgers on the hospital menu. Good Samaritan is starting to incorporate healthier plant-based items in their patient diets. Every diet requires a little bit of thinking, a little bit of learning some new tricks in the kitchen, maybe learning some new tastes. But a plant-based diet emerges as not only better for blood sugar control, better for your weight, better for your cholesterol, better for your blood pressure, but better in so many ways that we really think that's the thing to recommend. In 2018, a number of studies were published supporting the increasingly accepted idea that a whole foods plant-based diet is optimal for health. One example being a review paper published in Cardiovascular Medicine stating that the only diet shown to reverse heart disease is a plant-based diet, a sentiment echoed by physicians for a number of years. Heart disease is the number one killer in the United States and heart disease is reversible and preventable with nutrition. We know we have the cure to heart disease. We have the ability to eradicate heart disease. A plant-based diet has also been shown to reverse type 2 diabetes, hypertension and prostate cancer, as well as prevent 14 of the 15 leading causes of death. Eating a plant-based diet has extraordinary health benefits. Reduced risk for hypertension, reduced risk for high cholesterol, reduced risk for cardiovascular disease. I've seen patients who have full-blown diabetes go off of their insulin completely. Um, I've seen patients with hypertension that have been on multiple antihypertensives for years come off of all of their medications. The British Dietetic Association and the American Academy of Dietitians have both said that a well-planned vegan diet can be a completely healthful and optimal diet for anyone at all stages of life. A discussion opened up not just about how healthy plant-based diets are, but also about what is wrong with our current system. Right now we have a system that is based almost completely on sick care instead of health care. We call it health care, mm -hmm. but it really is sick care. It's money and dollars behind sickness. We spend more money in this country than any other country in the world on health care and we don't have better outcomes. So somebody has to stop and say, hmm, what is going on here? When you eat the, the standard American diet, you get the standard American diseases. And I don't wish chronic disease on anybody. 
But if people are eating a debilitating diet, they're going to have debilitating diseases. The heart disease, the diabetes, the autoimmune diseases, certain forms of cancer. Milk does a body good. It's not science. It's marketing. It's nonsense. We were made to believe that meat-based diets are superior to plant-based diets, a lie that has been exposed by medical experts again and again and again. When people eat a lot of animal products, particularly meat-based protein, your arteries are more likely to get clogged, your arteries are more likely to constrict, the arteries are more likely to get clogged up with plaque and other things. You get chronic inflammation, which is an underlying cause of so many chronic diseases. Uh, your risk of premature death from pretty much everything goes up correspondingly. And yet, when you go on a plant-based diet, you're really getting a double benefit, because not only are you not eating the things that are disease-promoting, but you're getting literally hundreds of thousands of other substances that are that are protective. What you put in your body is either going to create disease or fight it. There is no middle ground. I've seen them reverse their high blood pressure, reverse their diabetes, reverse their obesity, simply by telling them to go home and instead of using a scalpel, use a knife and use a fork. Also in 2018, a number of athletes ditched animal products and films were announced that would slay the myth that you can't be strong as a vegan. Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? Vegan athletes started appearing in major magazines, with bodybuilder Nimai Delgado gracing the cover of Muscle and Fitness and Jeremy Reinders, the fittest man in the Netherlands, featuring on the front of Men's Health. A lot of people always ask me, like, so where do you get your protein? And a lot of people don't have a clue that there's protein in plants. Stop worrying about the protein, because you'll get enough. You know, the strongest land animals, horses, elephants, rhinos, I don't know, gorillas, they get their protein from plants. During the Winter Olympics, Canadian figure skater and decade-long vegan Megan Dormel made headlines around the world when she claimed two medals. Record-holding marathon runner and vegan Fiona Oakes completed the Atacama Ultra Marathon, and as 2018 progressed, numerous athletes spoke out about how a plant-centered approach to eating had made them stronger, including NHL player Zeno Chara, boxer Mike Rashid, soccer players Hector Bellerin, Jermaine Defoe, and Chris Smalling, as well as Lewis Hamilton. I do feel the best I've ever felt in my life, in my 32 years, physically. No, do any no. of you guys still eat no. meat? No. Nothing. Zero. No. Order. How hard was that? Not as hard as it's, it is living at 425 Right, yeah, absolutely. I've watched hundreds, if not maybe thousands of people at this point have dramatic transformations. Plant-based athletes from a wide range of sports claimed podium positions in various competitions, from world-class surfer Tia Blanco to powerlifter Julia Trezise Conroy and ultra-runner Vlad Ixel, as well as many others who also achieved stunning successes. Influencers adopted a plant-based diet, businesses were starting to see how they could cash in on the movement. Plant-based diet. Logo? Now my logo. Nike promoted the plant-based lifestyle. Stella McCartney made trainer history when she launched a vegan version of Adidas's iconic Stan Smith shoe. And other fashion brands became increasingly aware of consumer demands for animal-free clothing and accessories while luxury fashion houses like Gucci and Michael Kors started ditching fur in 2017. Even more names followed suit in 2018, including Bellstaff, Burberry, John Galliano and Versace. Versace, for so long, you know, they were leaders in the fur industry. And for Donatello Versace to literally come out and say, you know what, I'm done with that. We're winning. For the first time ever, the catwalks of London Fashion Week were completely fur-free prompting calls for other cities to follow suit. Helsinki banned leather, and both Los Angeles and San Francisco voted unanimously to ban the sale of fur. Burberry announced it would no longer use Angora, and fashion giant ASOS pledged to ban silk, mohair, feathers, and cashmere, a decision many credited to animal rights charity PETA, which inspired a number of high street shops, including Topshop, 
H&M and Marks and Spencers to stop using mohair. Away from fashion, a key moment came when supermarket Tesco, after hiring a director of plant-based innovation in 2017, launched a major plant-based line with more than 20 options, rolling out across 600 stores. It started an avalanche of dedicated vegan sections and product launches, from vegan butter, cheese and ice cream, to sandwiches and other ready-made meals in light of new consumer demand. If you eat um, less meat, there's a lot of meat people, the meat industry is going to go down, you know. As stores expanded their meat-free offerings, these products became for the first time ever headline news, alerting more and more people to the options available everywhere. You know, there's callaloo, aki, sweet potato, yam, banana and tomato, cabbage, spinach, avocado, chocho, butter, bean and cocoa, courgette, millet, plantain, rice and peas and pumpkin, mango, dates and guava, chickpeas and cassava, Brussels sprouts and cauliflower, onion, fennel and cucumber, plum, pear and papaya, aubergine and sire, lime, lentils and quinoa, homeo bread and homeo flour, watercress and okra, tofu and sweet pepper, couscous and carrot, broccoli and coconut, peaches, apples, apricot, breadfruit, jackfruit, sour sap, pistachios, cashews and almond, walnut, peanut, also vegan, Sesame seeds, sunflower, lemon, orange, pineapple and melon, bogo wheat and garlic, hijiki and rocket, pop chow and pomegranate, kiwi, corn and turning berries, cherries and strawberries, beet or grape. See, there's a lot of food you can eat. Arsenal have lunch. It's the maddest, so maddest, yes. it's mad. Yes. It's mad. Yes. It was just Tesco before and a bit of Sainsbury's, whatever, whatever. Like a supermarket war Bro, about yes. who could be more vegan, vegan now. now right? yes. uh, but not even that, supermarket war, who could be more vegan, but tasty at the same time. Tesco's come with the oven and the wooden mm. kitchen, and then Arsenal come and with the vinegar, yeah. You're now, I, I heard this morning, in 25,000 stores. We are, yeah. Which is fabulous. It's a wonderful experience. Yeah, and, and certainly the buzzword that I'm hearing here um, as we walk up and down the aisles is plant-based everything is where it's at. People are now starting to recognize the abuses that exist in animal agriculture, not only to animals, but to workers, to rural communities, to the environment. You know, you look at the role of animal agriculture and climate change and antibiotic resistance and rainforest deforestation and ocean acidification. So many things converge around the same intersection of what we put in our mouths every day. But then everything went a step further when it was revealed that another product called clean meat could be brought to market by the end of 2018. What you're seeing on your screen may look like ground chuck, but no animal was harmed making it. Instead, this beef was grown from animal cells. The result? Meat without the animal, antibiotics, or waste. And there's a whole host of startups that are racing to commercialize the world's first ever meat and milk and eggs and leather and other animal products that, as you correctly point out, are grown from animal cells rather than from animal slaughter. So go into a little more detail about how that is done. So imagine taking a tiny sesame seed sized biopsy from an animal's muscle tissue. You put that biopsy inside of a cultivator where those cells, which would grow into muscle inside of the animal's body, think they are still inside the body. And then they grow into muscle exactly as they would in the animal's body outside of the body. And what that gives us the chance to do is to produce real meat that is much safer to eat and takes far fewer resources. If meat bosses had been scared before, now they had a real reason to be, as a powerful vision was being created of a confinement and slaughter-free world. And the conversation around what the future of meat looked like reignited in an unprecedented way. When we have a burger, we have a piece of chicken, or we have duck, today the idea of eating meat and eating animal is one and the same. Tomorrow, I think those two ideas will be separated. We can eat meat, we can eat all the meat that we want, but it won't require the slaughter or the confinement of an animal. As clean meat gained widespread attention and funding, the effect on meat industry representatives that rely on breeding and killing animals for profit became visible. I'm not quite sure what it is, and I'm not quite sure how it's derived, but I'd call it fake food. You know, when somebody's been following a certain tradition for a long time, they feel a threat by new people coming in who may also question the traditional ways in which they've worked. There's a lot of guardianship of different categories of jobs, and there's often resistance. I don't believe it is meat, but if, if they call it meat, then, then how would they differentiate it? And all of a sudden, this new group comes in, and they just want to call their product beef and ride on our coattails. And I think that's wrong. The US Cattlemen's Association, a trade group made up of 10,000 ranchers, was one of the loudest detractors. 
U.S. Cattlemen's Association filed a petition last month with the Department of Agriculture. It argues lab-grown and plant-based products should not use the terms meat or beef on their labels. The United States Cattlemen's Association is now petitioning the country's Department of Agriculture to define meat as coming from the flesh of an animal, slaughtered in the traditional way. We don't agree with the term clean meat. That implies that traditional ranching is dirty. The biggest concern is that it implies real meat is somehow dirty. Politics and, and corporate greed, they go hand in hand. Do not believe the labels and the lies and the adverts and the propaganda and the scams of these industries. We are approaching the tipping point. We have the momentum, but the other side is fighting back. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Animal rights groups have been exposing shocking videos of inhumane conditions at factory farms. I am an undercover investigator and I have never gone into an operation that we've targeted and seen happy animals. It's institutionalized torture on a scale that we've never seen before in the history of humankind. Time and again, uh, our undercover investigations behind these closed doors of the meat, milk, and dairy industries are revealing systemic animal suffering. I defy any person here, anyone here, to look at the images of those animals and say that this suffering is okay. It's not. It is unacceptable. Because what we're doing is unspeakable, it's despicable, and it's ignorant. And I see a clear change. A change is going to happen very soon. I, I can see it. As information around the impact of animal agriculture was disseminated worldwide, companies began to accept the inevitable fate of the growing plant-based sector. The future looks really, really bright for plant-based, and it's being recognized by leaders in the industry, not only the plant-based, but even but companies, big meat companies like Tyson that are investing in plant-based. The more insightful meat bosses had already started investing in alternative protein, with Tyson president Tom Hayes saying, if you can't beat them, join them, before investing in clean meat company Memphis Meats. Canadian conglomerate Maple Leaf Foods bought vegan brand Field Roast and German poultry company PHW backed vegan seafood. And as 2018 progressed, investment funds took notice and transferred significant capital into the meat analogue industry. However, it was one businessman that really stood out. Jeremy Collar, one of the most influential businessmen in financial equity, founded the FAIR Initiative, an anti-factory farming investor group with assets worth over $8 trillion, which included Swiss banking giant UBS. As well as injecting large quantities of wealth into the plant-based sector, this group also encouraged supermarkets to offer more plant-based options and lobbied for a meat tax. Farm Animal Investment Risk and Return Initiative says that a tax on meat is inevitable. We're not talking about PETA here or some lobby group. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a influential group. While some saw a meat tax as the answer to a number of environmental issues, others laughed at the idea. Did you hear? environmentalists are pushing for a tax on meat, claiming hamburgers, steaks, and other delicious delectables are harmful to the environment. The media are up there as guilty parties with the oil industry, with the coal industry. Um, they, they stop us from thinking, they stop us from questioning, they stop us from recognizing where we stand with respect to our multiple predicaments. And in so doing, they perform a grave disservice. What they do is what I call fake environmentalism. They tell people to change their light bulbs and drive an electric car, but they're not telling them to do the most important thing if you're an environmentalist, which is give up meat and dairy and switch to a plant-based diet. While the mainstream media stuck to the traditional narrative, social media was used. Any good movement that is successful exactly. has those extreme people. Yes. It also has the softer people totally. to apply and get people to change And their a minds, growing number of celebrities to... started speaking out. Why the mission? Here's why. I'm tired of being pimped by food companies and then eating bad, poisonous food and then feeling horrible in the morning and then working, working, working and not taking care of my body. That's why. Innovative chefs started actively casting off the limitations of traditional cuisine, offering mainstream audiences vegan food. Here to break it down, the British plant-based chefs and authors of the new cookbook, Bosch, Henry Firth and Ian Thiesby. Well, we've got three vegan chefs and they've all prepared some of your favorite dishes. We've got a doner kebab, um, a pizza yep. and mac and cheese. For anybody that's out there and they're, they're thinking like, 
they want to change their life and they want to go plant-based and they just think they can't do it. I just want people to understand that like, no matter what your tradition is, you can make a new one. You know what I'm saying? Like, the same traditions and the same laws that you follow, somebody thought that up. It wasn't like, it, it wasn't like some god came on the earth, wrote this on the tablet, and was like, that's how we have to do it, and that's it. If you see something's wrong, and you see something feels better, go for what feels better. And the good news is there's a convergence of forces that after four decades, you know, finally makes this the right idea at the right time. And basically, as, as I look around the table, uh, Dr. Dotson, no meat. Is that is that what I'm sensing here? That's good, considering I don't know anything that's in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I like it. <laughs> Good. You know, we've been hearing so much about plant-based eating lately, haven't we, right? And I don't know, I'm a meat eater, but it gives you food for thought. I think the most important message that I have is to remember that you, and I'm speaking to you watching this film, you make a difference. You as an individual make a difference. What you do each day actually is affecting what's going on in the world each day. So your life matters. You matter, and use your life wisely. We're going to pack up, okay, pack up all the signs, pack up all the food, pack up all the tables, take it all to the car, okay? And about 15 minutes, we're gonna hang out near the cars, all right, and then we'll come back. Okay, so then what they, do, what they probably will do is radio through to the trucks. Apparently, there's some trucks being held back. Then they'll send them through, and by that time, we'll be back here and um, yeah, try to trick them. They trick us, we'll trick them. Throughout 2018, an increasing number of people engaged in activism, shining a light on standard practices within industry by either waiting outside slaughterhouses to bear witness to the animals facing death, raiding slaughterhouses themselves, making videos on the kill floor, or partaking in cubes of truth. NBC6 anchor Trina Robinson joins us tonight with more on this new group that you may have seen in protests around the area. Trina. Yeah, the group is called Anonymous for the Voiceless. They want people to think about the rights of animals and where their food comes from. Are you a dairy farmer, are you? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, do you own a dairy farm now? Yeah. Oh, wow. So what is that? Man, I'm hey, just saying, you both, you got to be very, very careful what yeah. you're doing here. Why is that? No, nah, you got to be very careful. You could ruin our industry. If you can't face the reality, how can you morally justify paying for it to continue? What about the choice of the animals who have a preference to live that life? You see, we can eat other things. It's not a necessity for us to eat animal products. We can survive and thrive on a plant-based diet. Often what people mean when they say it's their personal choice is that it's a free choice they're making. And they're not making their choices freely because without awareness, there is no free choice. And the vast majority of people are not aware of how they've been deeply conditioned. Knowledge is power. And when we're given both sides of the argument, we can make a conscious decision based on how we truly feel about the situation. I mean, for so long, we've been fed the same kind of propaganda of you need meat for protein, you need you know, dairy cow's milk for, for calcium, but actually this isn't true. And when we can kind of level the playing field and put across what's actually happening to animals, the terrible suffering that they go through and the environmental damage that it causes to our whole planet, I think when people have that power, they're more compelled and empowered to make informed decisions. I didn't change until I truly knew the horrific nature of how these animals were treated. And so what these activists are doing, the only thing they're doing is really journalism. They're, they're going and filming inside of these facilities. As public awareness started to grow, farmers found themselves under increasing pressure. But then, of course, you, you, you do get death threats, which is quite ironic coming from people. With one farmer, Alison Waugh, insinuating she had received death threats during a segment broadcast by the BBC. She later clarified that she personally had not been the target of death threats, but it was too late as a vaudeville of unsubstantiated accusations against vegans spread across the globe. It was clear the media witch hunt had begun. These guys are terrorists for the farming community. They're terrorists. The vegans are, are traveling down the path to radicalization. They put my picture up with these claims without evidence. On a militant vegan. In most cases, it is peaceful and legal. But farmers say they're also facing regular harassment and abuse. It summed up the strange mood of our time, where even though veganism had never been more popular and initiatives like Plant Based News' World Plant Milk Day reached record numbers, vested interests impeded momentum. It's true that animal agriculture and many people within it are trying to hold on to the status quo. And activists are up against an industry that makes billions. Stop this. Hey, hey, buddy. Even various social media platforms 
which had once been heralded as driving the information age, were believed to be censoring environmental and vegan-related pages. And as this happened, it left the public questioning institutions and corporations' susceptibility to collude with the world's most powerful industry. Do you know what is a multi-billion dollar lobby? The cheese lobby has a multi-billion dollar lobby. The dairy industry, the beef industry. There's also ag-gag laws that prevent people from filming. Agricultural gag laws that prevent people from filming on these factory farms because they don't want people to know mm -hmm. how horrific those conditions are. And it's completely closed, the meat industry. You cannot see behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. And you can't even talk about it. In certain states, there's laws where you're not even allowed to talk about what goes on. This is huge business. And so there's a lot of money being funneled into ensuring that we are deluded into this idea that bees have a place on a healthy plate. Not only did the animal agriculture industry continue continue to siphon off tens of billions in the form of subsidies, but there was more evidence of how federal agencies were working with the meat industry to intimidate activists. And that's why these corporations, which control the government and control law enforcement, are prosecuting them. They're punishing them in response to the journalism that they're doing to chill and deter people from shining a light on what it is that these that really goes on inside of American industrial farms and the horrific torture and suffering that animals endure in, in, in our name. The meat industry invested in nitrate-free, so-called healthy bacon, and in a contentious move, desperate meat bosses even licensed superhero images in an effort to peddle processed burgers and sausages to children. The way advertisers subliminally equate meat eating and dairy consumption with values that we cherish is really sinister and it's misleading. They equate meat to masculinity, they equate eating dairy to femininity, they equate meat and dairy to upward mobility, patriotism, social status, keeping up with the Joneses, family values. It has nothing to do with any of it. In fact, quite the contrary. It's hurting families. It's creating disease. It's a bad influence on our society. So what they're doing is really, really morally wrong. Three major meat boards joined forces in a bid to push their products onto consumers, whose data showed were starting to turn their backs on meat. Meat products are rapidly losing popularity right across Canada, as many people are switching their diets to vegetarian or vegan. In fact, by the summer of 2018, it was revealed that the vegan sector had skyrocketed and growth of plant-based food sales were outpacing that of meat and dairy tenfold. This story was being repeated in regular market forecasts, which predicted even more growth, saying the global plant milk market would exceed $21 billion by 2024. This was helped by vegan milk brand Oatly, who emblazoned major transport hubs and buildings with ads that said oat milk is like milk, but made for humans. A local group promoting veganism is using some bold imagery to get their point across. As sales exceeded targets leaving shelves bare, the message amplified around the world, resulting in pushback from the dairy industry. Well, Got Milk, you may be one of the millions of Americans who prefer a plant-based substitute like almond milk or soy milk, but the FDA is looking to change what those products are allowed to be called. Just the other week, the FDA announced a proposed rule that would ban the use of the term milk for all non-dairy products. In similar fashion to the meat industry, the dairy industry cracked down on the labeling of its plant-based counterparts but then took things further by firstly calling on the Canadian and US government's might for financial assistance, secondly branding anti-milk posters a hate crime, and thirdly funding research that produced headline-grabbing claims in an attempt to conceal the real impact of the dairy industry from the public. You can't hide the sun, you can't hide the moon, and you can't hide the truth. And the truth will come out.
I'm here so excited to be a part of this because I think this moment can be about so many different things. And for me, I want to bring a message, which is veganism and that there doesn't have to be torture in fabulous fashion. Throughout 2018, celebrities continued to share information about the benefits of a plant-based diet, including Miley Cyrus, Kings of Leon star Jared Folliwill, Alicia Silverstone, Brian Adams, and Zac Efron. Iconic actor and activist Pamela Anderson said a vegan diet improved her sex life. Chris Hemsworth credited the lifestyle for his muscular physique, as did Jackass star Steve-O and Neo. While other well-known personalities announced they had ditched animal products, including Chris Packham, Tom Ford, Sean King, Ellie Goulding, and Ellen Pompeo. Former cardiac surgeon and entertainer Basim Youssef promoted the plant-based lifestyle to the Arab world, and the diet even reverberated around royal families. Thankfully, my passion and my field is not in finance or in, or in investment banking, but it's in making the world better. Celebrities used their profiles to share an animal rights message. For example, Alan Cumming actively campaigned against dairy, Sopranos star Adi Falco protested the treatment of animals outside McDonald's in Times Square. Ivana Lynch spoke at London's Animal Rights March, and Lewis Hamilton shared animal rights videos across social media. I can't imagine going back. Like, there's things that I see my friends eating, and I used to eat it. And I'm like, I feel sick to think what you're putting in your body. But it's because now I've read about it and I understand it. I understand it. I've, I've read some of the science that's been, and I'm like, eh. Eating without meat, it is a diet trend growing in popularity with athletes and celebrities, including, of course, Tom Brady. Detroit Lions running back Theo Riddick and Red Wings player David Booth also following plant-based diets. And you know who does as well? Beyonce. While Beyonce promoted a plant-based diet using social media, other celebrities took to film to spread awareness. The most notable being James Cameron, who executively produced The Game Changers, which featured Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of the most recognizable figures and symbols of power, is in this documentary. So this is the best plant-based documentary in human history. Other films were announced, many with high-profile casts, including Eating Our Way to Extinction, Eating Animals, Running for Good, Taking Note, let Us Be Heroes, What You Eat Matters, and Cowspiracy sequels Seaspiracy, set to expose the fishing industry. When we first embarked on this project, we had no idea that we'd be coming across the levels of destruction that we have been. We're looking at uh, the probably the most serious problem on the planet right now is diminishment of biodiversity, especially in our ocean. Towards the end of 2018, the urgency around climate change made headlines. There is a new report out about climate change and it is not positive to say the least. And you're gonna break it down for us. Yeah, it is not positive. I mean, it just keeps getting uh, worse. Urgent transformational change. That is the headline. That is what we're talking about. That's what needs to happen for us to really make a difference here. And we're not just talking um, uh, unspecifics. We're gonna nail down the numbers here because they got very specific in this right. report. I've been reading through it. A new study described as the most comprehensive of its kind added more weight to the discussion around the impact of animal agriculture. The UN branded meat the world's most urgent problem and by the end of the year mankind's effect on the planet was blamed for Hurricane Florence which ravaged the east coast of America and highlighted the damaging consequences of industrial farming. In the lead up to the storm Millions of animals were locked up and left to drown so that farmers could claim insurance, a damning example of how animals are viewed as mere commodities. Over 99% of farmed animals live on factory farms. Most of the population does not understand nor know the abuse that goes on in these farms. This was further highlighted in Dominion, a cinematic expose of factory farming in Australia, narrated by Kat Von D, Sadie Sink, Sia, Joaquin Phoenix and Rooney Mara. Premieres of the movie sold out globally from the UK to China. With Australian agricultural groups reportedly bracing themselves for a backlash, it was clear the meat industry was growing wary of how the expose might affect its business. But you won't stop blokes like us. You won't stop us. You've got no fucking hope. I'm telling you, and you, you want to be fucking careful again. 
As the Dominion movie kickstarted a movement, with thousands taking to the streets to protest the global exploitation of animals, a powerful and stark vision started unfolding of the coming battle between two sides of history. And animals in our society are, are the most vulnerable that we have, you know, and, you know, if there's anyone in this world that should be protecting the vulnerable, it should be us guys, you know, we should be leading from the front and, and, and you know, I think that's what being a real man is, it's not about, uh, you know, doing all this macho shit, it's actually about, uh, you know, acknowledging what's, what's true and, and being honest to that. It's like the stuff we're doing to animals is so fucked. Like honestly, it's so fucked up. When you when you take a step back and look at what we're doing. Just give me a sec. Every revolution starts with a whisper but the real change comes with a roar. I fully expect to go to prison someday, and I'm totally fine with that, because I think it is the cost of creating change. I think what Mahatma Gandhi said, you can judge a society by the way it treats its animals. That's a pretty reasonable observation from a very wise man. So why don't we get wise? I mean, Paul said that farming is transparent. It's anything but transparent. The things that we do to animals in terms of the mutilations are not transparent. What happens in slaughterhouses is not transparent. And even on a dairy farm, things like the male calves and the female calves being separated from their mothers, many people don't know that. How the hell did I not know this? It just makes you feel stupid. Like, honestly, I feel stupid. If I look and see something's wrong, I don't do the wrong. And we keep continuing doing the wrong just because of horrible traditions. Because just because something's tradition, it doesn't make it right. You know, for me, it's an ethical decision. You know, I just, I, I don't want to, I don't want to fuck with something that, that can't defend itself. None of us are trying to be horrible people. We've just been brought into this world of, where we just, we, all this fucked up shit is being seen to be normal. There is no such thing as humane slaughter. I've got to say, if I'm calling time on this industry, I think time is well and truly past. Make no mistake. There is no happiness in the dairy industry. If any other organism did this, a biologist would call it a virus. And the amount of victims is a number that you can't even comprehend with our minds. This is a big, big leap. This is the ultimate test for humanity. The Arctic Ocean is heating up at a much faster pace than the rest of the Earth. Temperatures over parts of the Arctic will increase as much as 54 degrees Fahrenheit this month. If there is a future for humanity, that future will not involve using animals for food. Veganism is the solution, and it encompasses a much wider range of possibilities for happiness as a species than any other type of diet or lifestyle. You know, if you really think about it, veganism is the cheapest shit out there. <laughs> like, you can go get rice and beans every day and you'll be satisfied. That's the cheapest thing you can get. It's filling, it's nutritious, it's healthy, it saves the environment and it's ethical. Looking back at the last 12 months, 2018, like last year, showed significant progress in the way the mainstream started to adopt veganism. Major magazines repeatedly brought up veganism, including the New Scientist and the FT Weekend. Government institutions like the NHS began to acknowledge the benefits of a plant-based diet, and companies like WeWork implemented major changes. It was revealed this week that global office sharing company WeWork are going meat free. Organisations gave awards to vegan entrepreneurs, including the World Economic Forum and the United Nations. Let's start to take protein directly from plants and use science to design and implement that against the blueprint of meat. Honestly, if I'm being serious, I wouldn't be surprised if we see massive, massive shift in the next 10 to 15 years. A vegan world is coming. The quickest and easiest way for an individual 
to be, to feel empowered and to make a difference and to be able to look at their face in the mirror in the morning and think, I'm making a difference, I'm doing something positive, not just for myself, my own health and my family's health, but for the health of the planet, is to change how we eat. Veganism isn't a, a pursuit for perfection. It's about living in a way where you can just try and cause the least amount of harm to the environment and to animals. Veganism is no longer viewed as a fringe lifestyle choice. It is a moral framework searing into the consciousness of huge numbers of people. The question now is, what will you bring to 2019? Hi, this is Klaus, and I want to say a big thank you for watching Plant Based News. It's people like you who mean we can continue to create films, campaigns, and up to the minute plant based news. I wanted to let you know about PBN Insiders, a subscription based platform where you can receive exclusive perks and content not available to the general public. If you become a PBN Insider, you'll automatically be entered into a drawing for the chance to win a nutrition course worth over $1,200. This is the E Cornell plant-based nutrition course headed up by pioneer Dr. T. Colin Campbell, and you can do it from anywhere in the world because it's over the internet. In addition, PBN Insiders get access to a whole array of unique content, including uh, bonus interview segments, behind the scenes PBN footage, uh, cooking videos, vegan diet guides, and much, much more. I'll put the link down below, but some of my favorite uh, segments include a video featuring 15 of the leading plant-based doctors where they go over their favorite recipes, an exclusive interview of Ed Winters, otherwise known as Earthling Ed, about his journey to becoming the activist that he is today. Some behind the scenes full length interviews from our end of year documentary, Vegan 2018. And there's tons of other interviews, including exclusive segments from, for example, Beyonce's nutritionist, Marco Borges, as well as others, including Dr. Milton Mills, Dr. Laurie Menino, Dr. Salish Rao, Just, and former Hampton Creek CEO, Josh Tetrick, Dr. Joel Furman, UK grime artist JME and Dr. Will Tuttle. A lot of people have also enjoyed the What I Eat In A Day video from Prince Khaled and the Mill Inspiration video guide and supporting PDF guide from leading fitness models as well as the cooking segments from world leading plant-based chefs. You also get to access the library of conference presentations including Dr. Anthony Hadge's 40 minute talk about the power of plant-based nutrition at private plant-based news event and much, much more. Becoming a PBN Insider directly supports our mission to create more films, campaigns, and of course, up to the minute, plant-based news across all of our social media platforms. If you've got any questions about PBN Insiders or uh, anything related to the platform, please feel free to email me at klaus at plantbasedseas.org and hopefully see you on the inside.